Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. We back, man. We back in the video. This one's gonna be on seven signs the Holy Spirit has left you throughout the entire Bible. It talks about, uh, especially in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit sent from the Lord sent to trouble him because we all know what he was trying to do to David. David was next up, the next king of Israel. You know how it is when you're about to level up, when you're about to become the next king, when you're about to become the next biggest thing. There's always going to be a demon. There's always going to be someone full of jealousy and envy uh, towards you. And they ain't, they ain't trying to get you to reach to the top. Okay, so an evil, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord was departed from Saul. God took that away from him. And because of what he was trying to do to David, trying to kill him, do, do all these other things, right? God sent an evil spirit to torment him. And even in the midst of that, David still had love, man. David still had love for him. David still had love for his brother, okay? So these are the seven signs. Also, throughout this entire video, because I know a lot of people will be watching my videos at work or at school, so they don't look at the screen. I'm going to be putting Bible verses throughout this entire video, okay? So make sure you guys look at the screen if you guys have the time. All right, number one. The number one sign the Holy Spirit has left your life is there's no more conviction when you sin, okay? The Bible says we all sin. If a man says he's without sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. But when you're just fully given over to your sin and you don't feel bad, like whenever I fall short, whenever I uh, sin, whenever like I do things I'm not supposed to be doing, I feel wrong. I feel bad. Like, you know, I feel like, dang, like I got to repent, you know, because I really love God and I know the Holy Spirit is dwelling within me and I'm strong and I'm on fire for God. And I know I have a high calling from God and I can't be doing that no more, you know. So the conviction cuts deep. And, you know, and if you're out here saying you got the Holy Spirit, walking the Holy Spirit, and you're just like, you know, you, you don't feel no conviction, no wrong to what you're doing. That's dangerous, bro. That's extremely dangerous. So that's number one sign, man. No more conviction when you sin. The, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 13, the backslider shall be filled uh, with, his, with his own uh, works. Okay. The, uh, the backslider. Should... I'll make sure I leave a verse right there, guys. The Bible verse dwells in my the Bible dwells in my heart, so you know I, I know I know that verse in my in my head, but like I don't know the full verse. So I'll make sure I'll leave it on the screen. Yes, but and next next one up, number two is a number two sign the Holy Spirit has left your life is that you have no fruits of the Spirit in your life. Okay, so when someone has the Holy Spirit, they're gonna take on the traits of the fruits of the Holy Spirit: love, joy, peace, uh, kindness, meekness, self control. Um, humbleness stuff like that right so when you don't put you don't you're not humble what's the opposite of humble you're pretty much you're the opposite of what the fruits of the spirit say so love you have hate joy you're full of depression and and, and sadness and sorrow okay uh next one up um meekness you're you're arrogant you're self-righteous you're prideful um you see where i'm trying to go at so you don't have the fruits of the spirit you have the works of the flesh and that's gonna manifest i mean me being with discernment and anyone who has holy, who has a Holy Spirit has, could discern the gift of discernment. You can see when someone is operating with the fruits of the Spirit or the, the, the works of the flesh. Okay, so that's number two. Okay, when you when you have the Holy Spirit, you're gonna have those fruits, bro. Obviously, like I said, this will be t sometimes we struggle with something. Me, I struggle with uh, being patient. That's also for long suffering. That's also for the Spirit. Sometimes I could just be in a rush, and I got and I work on that every single day. But you know. I'm working on that. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying, okay, this is just who I am. Nah, you know, I'm working on striving to be, even the Bible says to be perfect as your heavenly father is, is perfect. So I'm striving to become better. Okay. Number three is you're no longer interested in God's word, not only just reading it, but applying it and living it in your life. Okay. Cause it's easy just to read the Bible. There's many people who read the Bible, but are they applying it to their lives? We know what the Bible talks about this in James chapter 1, verse 22 to 26 says, If any man be a hearer and not a doer, he deceives his own self. Okay, so when you're no longer interested in actually, you know, you say you, you know certain verses, right? But you're just no longer interested. You just you just don't care no more. Um, when you have the Holy Spirit, you like I said, you have a purpose. It's every, every, every day. Guys, yeah, someone calls so the thing cut off. But it remind, this reminds me of a verse. Number three says in 1 John chapter not, uh, 2, verse 19, it says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no devout have continued with us. But they went out that it may be made manifest that they were not of us. So that means that there's going to be people who are going to, you know, be on fire for Christ with you, walk in the walk, your brother, your sister, and they're going to go back. And you're never going to see them again. And when you when you do see them again a year, a couple months, two years later, years later, down the line, they're going to be worse than they were when they first gave their life to Christ. Okay. And we know what the Bible talks about that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 47 or 45 talks about how unclean spirits come back and torment you. And the state of a man is worse than he was the first state. There's a lot of brothers who I know who are on fire for God. 
and they were never really a brother. It was just for a season. So you're going to have a lot of people like this on your walk that you get run into. So yeah. Number four is you avoid fellowship union with other believers. Now, what, am I, what I mean by that, I'm not saying that you have to go to church. Okay. We all know if you watch my videos, you know that how I, my stance about that, but you, you refuse to befriend other believers because you know that they're going to hold you accountable and you got to really be about that life. And a lot of people who I notice, they don't want to be around me for whatever reason. Um, and now God's showing me is because they're on the other path. And they don't want to show me that they're on their other path. But I'm not judgmental. Like, I won't cast a stone at you. I love my brother. You're my brother. I don't care, you know, what, whatever you're doing. You know, like, you're still my brother, you know. But some people, I notice that they avoid fellowship. They, they avoid union um, because they know that you're light. And your spirit, it bothers the spirit in them. I understand how this works, okay? Your spirit irritates their demons. When you have the Holy Spirit and someone has departed from that, they don't want to be around you. You literally convict them. Just your presence. This presence of God in you bothers them, okay? So you're going to have people who avoid fellowship and union with other believers. Now, remember, the Bible says that God doesn't dwell with temples made with hands. So I'm not talking about you have to be in a church. Now, I know the Bible does say if two are gathered, two or three are gathered in the midst of my name, there I am in the midst of so I'm not saying I'm not talking about the church. If you go to church, good on you. But I'm talking about people who just avoid fellowship, communication. It's not even just you, just talking. People who avoid that, guys. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people I know like that. It's purposely with believers. Okay, number five is you will love sin. Okay. Um, when, that, when we all know when you become born again, okay, uh, baptized, you know, we know the truth. You know, God is giving us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. You're not going to love sin. Okay, you're actually going to love to please him. Now, are you going to be without sin? No, because I got to always say that because people take my words out of context. Are you going to be without sin? Absolutely not. But you're not going to desire to live a life, a sinful lifestyle. Okay, you're going to want to be holy. Okay, you're going to want to be set apart. And, you know, you're going to want to obey the word. Simple as that. You're not going to want to love sin. You know, you have people saying demon time and they're glorifying that. And you just got to be careful with the reprobates be careful about being around certain certain people because the people who love sin okay they're going to be used by satan to, to to get you off the path man i'm letting y'all know some real stuff okay so always be cautious the bible even talks about this in 2 timothy chapter 4 verse 3 that people will give heed to seducing spirits people will use bible verses to justify their sin okay they're going to be given over to fables it's all prophecy and okay? number six is no longer love the truth, okay? No longer love the truth. What is the truth? Jesus, what is the truth? The, the commandments, okay? The law, okay? We know that the Bible talks about how if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But when people have, when the Holy Spirit has departed from someone, they no longer love the truth. And when you don't love the truth, this is what happens. Strong delusion, okay? This is what happens, strong delusion. The Bible says that strong delusion will be on the people who receive not the love of the truth. Ooh, man. So this is, this is how you know we can see this happening today. We can see this happening in today's age, guys. No longer love the truth. And remember, the people who don't have the love of the truth in them, God's going to send them over to strong delusion that they will believe the lie. Okay, they're going to love lies over the truth. And we all know who the father of lies is, the devil. Okay, so this is a number seven sign. The Holy Spirit has departed for someone. It says, no desire for spiritual things, okay? And it's just a work of the flesh. And I was talking about that with number two. And I'll leave a verse to show you guys, okay? Show you guys that verse. Every time I bring that verse to light, uh, people get offended. People get in their feelings, their emotions. That's what happens, guys. When you're convicting people of sin, when you're telling people the truth of the gospel, people are going to get mad at you. They're going to be in their feelings and their emotions. And it, when you, someone has a Holy Spirit, yes, we have feelings. Yes, we have our emotions. But we're not uh, emotional driven. We're not feeling driven. Like, nah, you know? So... You're going to notice that the people who have the Holy Spirit apart from them, okay, they don't desire spiritual things. It's all carnal, okay? It's all work in the flesh, debating, going back and forth, casting stones, and, you know, they're no longer truly desire to, to obtain the fruits of the Spirit. It's all going to be the flesh with them, okay? Like I said, the works of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. This goes deep. Those who do those things will not inherit God's kingdom. Now, if you are on the list and you're struggling with something, okay, you know, be humble, repent. Let's get, you know, let's get right. Let's get better. Okay. But those who are on that list and they don't feel the need to repent, they use Bible verses or once saved, always saved. And I'm good. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a dangerous game. Remember, many are called, only few are chosen. So these are the seven signs the Holy Spirit has left the individual. 
No more conviction of sin. Uh, no more conviction when you sin. Number two is no fruits of the spirit in your life. Number three is no longer interested in God's word, not only just reading it, but applying it to your life. Number four is you avoid fellowship union with other believers. Number five is you, you will love sin. Number six is no longer in love with the truth. You're going to be going over to a strong delusion. Number seven is no desire for spiritual things and the work of the flesh. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have really, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. I am out. Peace.